everybody. I don't have any uh, fancy red pill intros to get us started. Need, we need to, we need to we need to get you some fancy. I know. Uh, I could have brought my ukulele and played a song, maybe. But uh, yeah, there you any, go. I don't have any good red pill songs. Since, since we're since we're talking about Will Smith and he used to be a rapper, we could have came in with a, a slick, you know, nineteen nineties rap song. Oh, that would have been good. <laughs> Little uh, Fresh Prince of Fresh Prince of No Ass. Is that what he was <laughs> in? This is a story two? all about how my life got flipped, turned upside down. Yep. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, that's too good. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, I'm here with Paul. We have uh, some other guys probably be popping in a little bit later. But, yeah, we're going to talk about uh, Will Smith and Jada Pinkett and not just them. Cause I don't like just sitting around talking about celebrities. I think it's kind of low, low IQ. Um, but the idea of um, being separated or taking a break or seeing other people, I think that's a more underlying important uh, topic under the Will Smith stuff. So <clears throat> one, I'm pretty pissed off at Will cause I've liked Will for a long time, but they they deliberately lied like hardcore because I remember like seven years ago or something they were doing like a lot of outward um, visual media type stuff as hey look at this family aren't we great and they're holding yeah. hands on the beach and they're playing with all the kids at the same time and they're like trying to really sell this like wholesome American successful family and it was all f bullshit yeah all of it it was just one big lie uh, you you've have you ever noticed that a, there's a lot of that, right? There's a lot of like power couple mm -hmm. um, where it's like a marriage of convenience type situation. Look at like uh, mm -hmm. Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Like they haven't, they haven't been in the same bedroom since he fucked Monica Lewinsky, you know, but, <laughs> but, 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 uh, but in public they, they go to, they no. go to speeches together. You know, when she was campaigning for president, he was campaigning with her. It's like, you guys don't even live in the same state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I worked for a company uh, that shall remain unnamed. It was a it, it was a, um, a construction, major construction company in Southern California. And I, I did IT for them. And the owners of the company were were like that. They uh, they were they, uh, in the on the front of the company. They were like a power couple. They ran the company. But behind closed doors, like they didn't even talk to each other. Yeah. You know? There's a lot of that stuff. And it's just I don't. I don't know, man. I, I don't like that stuff. I don't agree with that stuff. I, as a man, I don't see why you would tolerate or put up with it. I think you're much better off paying the cost of ending the relationship than continuing suffering. Ryan's a tactical My... paragliding expert. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, Something I need. Uh, I need. I need to know the context. Another, <laughs> another little point. Uh, another little point I'd like to say is that. Um. Man, when somebody when somebody's relationship or something horrible has happened, they always push this like, oh, look at the family, look at the family, look at us all, and they're all hugging together, right? So they had split, and they're doing all this fake uh, uh, media stuff saying like, oh, we're this great family. Uh, Conor McGregor was accused of a violent rape a number of years ago, right? The whole, it was covered up by everybody, didn't wasn't reported on by anybody, and then... Um, they per started parading him around at all these events with his family and his kid and he's holding the kid. And then like all while there's like these leaks of text messages about the, the horrid rape. Like this girl had to have a tampon surgically removed and like there were witnesses, like she didn't even, she wasn't even the one who came forward. It was a witness who was there watching her get raped, like reported it. He, uh, he went to the barrister or that went to the police with his barrister at the lawyer and admitted to having sex with the woman. So like, we know he had sex with her, but like they're still parading him around with his kid and like at the Super Bowl and shit like that. Like the media is wild, man. I think this is actually apropos because Ryan just did a whole stream on marketing. <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Actually, the one question I had for you guys: so why did he slap Chris Rock then? Theater over his roommate. Yeah, who who? <laughs> What other notable thing happened at that Oscars that you can talk about? It's mm. true. So you Nothing. think it was staged? 
it was staged because their numbers have been dropping horribly for a number of years. And so that, hey, Will. Geez, hey, Will, we need you to oh, oh, buy a bullet. We need you oh, to buy was, the bullet. But was it worth it, though, because he got kicked out of the Oscars for, like, the next 10 years or something? That's you know? I mean, I don't know. Like, what is maybe maybe Jada's got something on him. Maybe. <laughs> so it was. See, he I sucked, think it was, he sucked a dick once. He sucked a dick once. Some people know, yeah, know and now he, now he's got to like just like go along with their bullshit. It was. That's either why that, she's pining over Tupac now. It's like at least he knew what to do. Right. <laughs> see. See. Either it, it was either staged or he was doing it to get back in her good graces. Right. Like there's guys that I know t- to this day that are still pining over exes from like several years ago. I mean, this Jeez. they've been split up for seven years. Do you think he might be still trying to get her back? Got to get that ex back. Yep. <laughs> gotta go still, no contact he, though. You got to go no contact. Will. that's how everybody knows that dude, literal <laughs> Disney fantasy though. How many, like, remember how we, everybody joked, Oh, they watch some movies and they get, the, what's this? This is like uh what's his face with the ghetto over top of his head at the end of the movie. Do you guys remember that one? The rom-com with John Cusack. Oh, oh, yo, oh, the ghetto blaster. Yeah. Yeah. This is like those ghetto blaster oh, moments. Say anything. Grew up watching say those anything. And now they're trying it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Except for but instead of a ghetto, he, it's Chris he Rock. Stood outside the window. <laughs> he stood outside the window for seven years. Yeah, exactly. While she's banging other dudes. And because the movie said it takes them back. And I guess in their brain, they kind of forget how that happened. And they're like, ah, it probably makes sense. Sure enough, it doesn't. No. Nope. The, the only reason why I think it might not be staged is because Chris Rock, uh, went on and did like a whole stand-up thing addressing it and he came across as pretty sincere unless his kayfabe is like next level you know <laughs> who knows Dude, maybe i mean really good think about it they, sta- they staged something and now he's got everybody's talking about the oscars like all their likes and views and interactions go up on their social medias and then um man he, he's got a bit now he's got comedy to go Not out just a bit, go he had a whole hour. you know he's got a whole hour of stand-up over that one incident and he can do that he can go on tour for a year and talk about that yeah and john yeah. not just him marlon wayans remember marlon wayans yeah well, he has an hour on it too where he talks <laughs> about how he and jada pinkett smith were like childhood buddies he had the big crush on her and then when he was gonna get married he's like god send me a sign that she wasn't the one and then he makes a reference to the Oscars. <laughs> god look it out for me <laughs> yeah it's crazy though isn't it like one slap all of a sudden an entire ecosystem of revenue yeah. has stemmed from it and and I, that's kind of the era we're living in isn't it is the uh the shock the shock uh uh or uh outrage um oh. advertising outrage advertising <laughs> yeah it's kind of where right? this is referencing it, yeah <laughs> exactly so it's like that's the whole thing what the, what's going on tonight fucking the paul and the paul brothers is fighting some skinny fat jujitsu nerd Oh, was that going through? I thought somebody didn't somebody back out of it. And now they have to. Well, they backed out. They're out. They're in. He threw a microphone at him yesterday at the weigh-ins and cut his face. And the fight's still on. And they've got a backup guy ready. And his brother's ready just in case he can't go. I like, dude. Did he cut himself? That's such an old school wrestling thing. Yeah, he, <laughs> gave, he gave no, no, himself no, no. at, 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 at the. He got, the, he got the, hit with the microphone. He got hit at with the, the press microphone. conference. At the yeah. press conference. Yeah, he he got hit with the microphone right in the face. <laughs> it was all it was it, almost this is all the most stupid it's the most stupid like pro wrestling like it is it's like the artard level of of ent- entertainment i'm just like i don't want to be around you people watching this stuff but like i have to watch it tonight now because i need something to talk about in my podcast tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah i know that pain dude i really do oh, like, I gotta, I gotta i'm a content creator and... i gotta suck it up <laughs> yeah i gotta suck it up and watch this garbage you know, it's bad, bad like MMA itself and fighting is bad enough as it is right now. It's like most of these guys aren't actual fighters. They're super, they're uh, Instagram uh, thoughts, mm-hmm. you know, they're just male Instagram thoughts. They just want likes and views and they just want to get patted on the back. They're not, they're not gritty. They're not there to fight. Like was, I came from was, a time when guys used to fight in cornfields and, in uh, warehouses for no, and nobody was watching fighting for 500 bucks because we wanted to fight. That shit is gone, man. Used to fight at a bar because there was nothing to do. <laughs> Fighting over the whammon. You know, that, that press conference was almost as good as the one Glenn Lawrence and I did last week. So, yeah. I don't know oh, if you that's guys right. That. <laughs> Dude, I feel bad. I was at my buddy's retirement ceremony, so I missed your pay-per-view. It was like the same day. Well, it's it's it hasn't been produced yet. Glenn's still editing it. Oh, yeah. good, good. 
So yeah, I didn't, no, I didn't you have you haven't it. missed it. You you sir can still get on the train. <laughs> good, good. Honestly, I am excited because I was watching it at first. I'm like, oh, okay, it's a thing. Let's see how it goes. But you guys, like, I can tell you guys grew up watching wrestling. I'm like, dude, like they're doing pretty good for a first time out. It's no heart family, but it's damn good. Yeah, promos and that. Like, how much wrestling training are you guys doing on this? Hey, yeah, dude, speaking I... of kayfabe, at least he's leaning in on it, guys. <laughs> There's a lot of spots in Vegas to to train pro wrestling too. I think. Is there really? There is, yeah. Because I was I lived there for like two and a half years, and I was uh, trying to start a um, reality show with Phil Baroni, and who's in prison for murder right now. Um, <laughs> Interesting. And there. which he, uh, people say he might be innocent, um, but anyways, he was doing the pro wrestling thing, him and Bonner and stuff. So I went to a couple like small show events. I actually did a little like a uh, corner man like bit or whatever for him. Oh, you're you're Bobby the Brain for somebody? Yeah. Yeah. We, uh, like so chase we, somebody had to chase somebody around the ring once or something throw salt in their face so at the end the referee doesn't see it <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> glenn and i we actually were were supposed to work with big valley wrestling which is a school out there but they backed out because they didn't like our content they were they were offended by it oh, so cool. we ended up we ended up doing it in a boxing ring uh which hurt like i took some bumps in the boxing ring it, yeah, yeah it's like this it's like a fucking table <laughs> it fucking hurts man <laughs> Just laughing at it. after Scott Hall's career, you didn't think there was like a bottom of personality that they weren't willing to accept. He was like a alcoholic. He was worse than Will Smith for his performance outside of the ring. There's a there's a lot of wokies in pro wrestling because it's a performance art, you know. That draws oh. a lot of <laughs> that draws a lot of that crowd, you know. Fair. <laughs> I feel bad. I feel bad, John. I think we like distracted from the the topic. Oh yeah, yeah. Here. We're talking about Will Smith. Yeah. Will Smith. Right, yeah. <laughs> It's honestly a great lesson. I do like it. Like I get it. It's performative. It's at it. We don't know how much of it is real, how much of it is not real. But at the same time, the part that resonates with the audience, that part I think is kind of real. You can work with if you had to. Like, yeah, you've obviously like every guy in some point in his life has been stupid and done something because he really wanted a girl that she just was not interested. And all the gestures in the world didn't count for nothing. And this one here, like even the, all the all the whatever, they didn't even live together. She's like, uh, he was mostly my beard. In fact, I wouldn't <laughs> doubt if that's what she has on him. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> no, if that's you guys a... don't know what a beard is, by the way. That means a gay husband that's there for appearances. Yep. I've heard, that, that, I've heard uh, that rumor too. Yeah, Nancy though, though. Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi and her uh, hammer, hammer oh, wielding yeah, hammer man. husband. Yeah. <laughs> hammer later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, that's well, a lesson too, right? If there's a, know. if like this stuff going on and then you're going to be like, do I really want to base my life on be like Will Smith or however many guys like Andrew Tate, remember that his too, talking about how tough he was, pimp this, pimp that all of a sudden, all of a sudden now he has a family and he's Muslims. Like, where did this come from? These things keep changing so much. Do you really want to mm. like, how much of your life do you want to base on that online guy? Who's got a carefully curated view of his life. And then, it's, and then he shifts 180 degrees <laughs> to yeah. where where it's convenient for him. Yeah, wasn't Logan and, Paul and Jake Paul weren't they Nickelodeon stars? Now look at them. They're I'm Mike Tyson. I'm Muhammad yeah. Ali. It's like really, <laughs> exactly, really. Oh, and you know, the worst part of that is I over a decade ago I predicted all of this. Oh, right? that's I predicted. Right. I said I said if we don't force uh mma to actually operate as a sport like you're gonna see more and more clown stuff and we're gonna get to a point where people don't care about the talent and the ability of the fighters they just want to see a shit show and look where we're <laughs> that's at what they got it's what they got exactly right i will and say they... this uh was it jake jake paul is actually really good in wrestling that guy's <laughs> <laughs> he's actually pheno <laughs> phenomenal in wwe <laughs> For a guy who just like is a part timer and just started doing it like a year ago, dude's mm -hmm. got some athletic ability there. Well, he's been doing KFAB his whole life. Mm -hmm. You know, like that's that's just who he is. It's that's his frame, <laughs> right? His frame is KFAB. I don't I know really if he knows how to be a real person. <laughs> he probably is the real person, just a crowd pleaser, a people pleaser. Everything mm -hmm. he does is based on making other people like him. If only there was a reference to that with red pill that we could teach guys. Some kind of nice guy behavior. Always seeking <laughs> validation and then putting you into trouble. Mm. Like I said, I love the meta on these things, man. Even Jordan Peterson now is kind of an example of that. That's for more for me. Like what happens when you stick around too long? Let mm. Ben Shapiro put his hand up my ass and tell me what to say. Not for me. True. Um, 
Yeah. So that was one of the other things, you know, not just talking about Will Smith and Jada and celebrities. I don't want to talk about them too much, but the situation itself, like being in, you know, if he say, let's say he's not, he's not gay. It's not a beard situation. He's actually genuinely just trying to be a nice guy and do what Disney told him to and, and do what John Cusack did in the movies <laughs> to get the girl, you know? Um, and, uh, Man, I could list ten great John. You could. It could have been. Uh, it could have been a shit test situation too, where she's like, you know, Tupac would have slapped that motherfucker, and he's like, "Well, I better <laughs> get up there and slap that motherfucker to show that, her." That, that could be very well. <laughs> where awesome. he just absolutely <laughs> failed the shit test, you know, where yeah. she's like, "Oh my god, I didn't actually want him to fucking." <laughs> but, yeah. So the situation of that, like, you know, um, your woman coming up to you and be like, "Hey, maybe we should see other people," or. I, I want to break, or I think we should get separated. Hey, right? I, I don't know what your guys' opinions are on this. I'd like to hear, but for me, I'm saying it's already over. Yeah, it's already over. Oh, yeah, you, you you move on immediately, and you focus on something else. Like she's a girl, done. A girl she, says, "I I need to find myself. I need a break." It, if she it, already she needs to go ride that, some dick, that's it's, <laughs> my, it's my opinion that, or she already has. Mm. My it's my opinion that she um she no longer respects you. If she's asking for a break, a separation to see other people, she does not respect you. And once the respect's gone, the relationship's done. Yeah. Yeah. Women have I mean, a hard time there. Women have a hard time of just straight up breaking up with a guy unless they're really mad. Right. So they sort of a lot of times do like the, the death by cop thing where they just they just act so shitty that the guy breaks up with them. Mm. <laughs> right or they they do a soft breakup where they're like i i just let's just i just need some space i just need some space but they're because they're too afraid to say we're done i don't i don't like you anymore i'm not attracted to you anymore you know i want to go fuck tim over here in sales whatever yeah. yeah well even in the married red pill we actually this guy horns uh horns of apathy one of the moderators there he did the i love you but i'm not in love with you speech a lot of guys were getting he went through 10 years of history, every example of it. And what happened? 95% of them, the girl was already cheating on him and she had checked out. And that's when he got that speech. So yeah, it's, if she's checked out, it's not about winning her back. It's probably too late by then. Six months mm -hmm. before she checked out would have been the time to worry about that stuff. Yep. And most guys it's, she would have cheated. They sat there for six months doing a whole bunch of work, trying to win her back when that's not the point of any of this red pill stuff anyway. Then they find some irrevocable evidence that she did cheat. And then they think they're like, oh, I just wasted my time working out and eating right and looking attractive. And then they sit there and they sulk. And they usually delete their accounts and leave right afterwards too, which is hilarious. <laughs> like it was her fault. It's like, dude, she just gave you the speech. And they all give the same speech too. It's like there's a script you can learn in girls' school. Yeah. Maybe that's what they teach the girls in fifth or sixth grade when they kick the boys out of the room. <laughs> In, in the in uh the sex ed class where they separate the boys and the girls are like all right girls here's here's the play <laughs> this, yeah. is, this is how you talk to the boys yeah oh man they all want to fuck you so this is how you <laughs> this is how you manipulate the boys yeah yeah so the situation and the guys who stick around you're you're being used you're being used as as uh, a bank uh machine ATM, you're being used as uh, emotional support. You're being used as a chauffeur, maybe to drive her or friends and the kids around. Uh, you are being exploited. You're not getting anything out of the relationship. And you keep doing things. You keep sacrificing yourself, your time for her, for her attention, for her approval. And you're never going to get it. But she's never going to tell you that. She's going to keep you on the line and keep you doing stuff or keep you working for her. Even, even in uh, a breakup or divorce situation, she's like trying to still be friends with you. She's trying to get you to do work for her. Mm -hmm. Oh, there it is. Yeah, Darvo. There's a common term. You guys need to learn about this one too. Have you guys heard about this? I know, no. I know you know it, Paul. The Darvo? deny, attack, reverse victim and offender. Oh, yeah, okay. Darvo. That's when a lot of guys, they'll, they'll, the wife's cheating on him, but you know she wants to have her cake and eat it too because she likes the lifestyle. She likes everything there and she likes having the fun toy. So yeah, are you cheating on me? You deny it. And then you attack them. How dare you don't trust me? Well, you're too controlling. And then reverse victim and offender. That's where you get the whole, uh, you know, I wouldn't have done this if you had just been more available or something like that. It's it's like typical gaslighting stuff. 
And it, that, and they ever, and the worst part is they always tell you this as if it's like evil guys doing this to girls. When it's mostly girls doing it to guys. When guys mm. get gaslighty, they get punchy. <clears throat> girls get this emotional crap, you know? And you see these examples yeah. on TV. That's the even if it's scripted, even if the whole thing was kayfabe with Will Smith, again, I keep coming back to this point. It's like this stuff really happens. The only reason they wrote it then was because it resonates with an audience that yeah. sees it in real life. Yeah. No, that's why a lot of the that's why a lot of the woke entertainment garbage it doesn't sell and nobody likes it is because it's not relatable. <laughs> she can't beat up those Russians. She's like five three. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Ah. <laughs> But Glenn can't wrestle. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see what you did there. I, I see what you did there. Yeah. And then uh, there's a lot of fallout that happens. I think a lot of negative fallout that happens when you put yourself in that compromised situation. I, you know, the idea of staying with somebody, a terrible person, <laughs> um, for the for the sake of the kids. I don't think it's healthy at all for the kids. I think the kids are worse off in that scenario. Like, yeah, because they don't know what to man. believe. They don't know what to believe. They're like, why are we out with dad today when you talk shit about him uh, 90% of the time when we're not on TV? Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. Or And just they know. They can see you know, her roller eyes. They can see her attitude. They can see what's going on. They can see that their mother doesn't respect this guy. And treats him like shit. Like I don't think that those kids are gonna look up to him with much respect. I, I don't see how you could do that. I, I I don't I can't look at a man with respect if I'm seeing his woman boss him around and and be bitchy to him. I'm like, oh, bro, that's like I I have trust issues with you at that point. <laughs> well, it's worse than that too. Think about the kid. He doesn't know anything. He doesn't know how to do a relationship. And even if you even if he does it and sees it and doesn't like it. What's he going to default to when he's in that situation himself? He's going to default to what he remembers. That's why how many how many girls have you dated in your life's lifetime where they're like they hate their mom, and then you start to notice a lot of that behavior looks very familiar, Susan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, a hundred percent. They may that's, not like her, but it's all they know. That's all they've been trained on. That's one of the that's one of the blessings about divorce, you know, because a lot of people. The shit on divorce, you know, they especially in the in the in the red pill MGTOW space, right? Oh, we need to we need to keep these women trapped in these in these marriages, <laughs> you know. But it's like, but but it it if you do have kids, it actually gives you the opportunity to go be in a healthy relationship. If if you do the work and learn how to manage relationships and lead relationships, if you're a guy, it it actually gives you the opportunity to show your kids what a healthy relationship looks like. You yeah. Know. Mm -hmm. Or at the very least, like healthy boundaries. Yeah, yeah, your mother and I didn't work out, and then he gets to see you be a good dad half the time. Mm -hmm. What's my saying? It's better to be a hundred percent of a dad fifty percent of the time than a fifty percent dad a hundred percent of the time. Mm. Hey, most Hopefully that resonates and makes sense. It sounds mo more like most a guys aren't even <laughs> you should put that on a t shirt. Fifty percent of the time. <laughs> 100 percent dad got... half the time. <laughs> I I feel like today parents aren't aren't parents fifty percent of the time regardless of how much time they spend on them because everything is oh put them in put them in a class put them in in in, in daycare put them in after school care put them in some other club thing after school and they, they spend less than 10 minutes a day with their kids give them give them rush, an ipad and shut the fuck up <laughs> yeah then they rush to do stuff on the weekends and everything's lost in the clutter there and they're not really spending time with them like they're yeah. just around i i don't know man it's i think that's one of the biggest problems we have <laughs> facing us today is is that like people don't raise their own kids latchkey kids tisk tisk actually that makes kid. sense i was a latchkey kid and i'm pretty messed <laughs> up so I, i'm gonna i'm gonna second that yeah we ended up we ended up content creators in the fucking yeah. <laughs> men's there a worse type of human being other than a good content creator <laughs> The only it's the only trade you can join where the better you get at it the worse a person you are <laughs> uh well, thank you will smith you're officially the best content creator out there who's the new one of that though wasn't there a new guy that was just doing that goofy relationship stuff recently like it was just before the second will smith revelation oh uh the paul which of the paul brother which one's dating the hoe yeah oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Friday night. Jake, Friday night. uh jake paul 
right? Jake Paul, yeah. The one where everybody's got a picture. Or of Logan, Twitter, Logan, Paul. Logan, 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 Logan Paul. Logan Paul. Yeah, yeah I mean, Logan no, Paul. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. They're both. I can't believe that they're they're shitting on my name. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh, it's like uh, Office Space. The guy who was named uh, Bolton. Yeah, well, Mike, Mike should you change your name? He's like, why? I'm not Why's the one who sucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just. I don't know. It was Is great it a... until that no talent ass clown came around. <laughs> <laughs> but it's weird because like it's a self respect thing. Either it bothers them, and why did you get in that situation if you weren't simping, or it doesn't bother them. In which case, like, why is he still engaging with the Kate with the with the theatrics of it? I don't know. Gets me. Like, which yeah, way I mean, is it? Does he care or does he not care? Because he's acting incongruent with both. I, mean, I think a lot of guys are emotional that way too, where they don't. They're not congruent. Well, I think he's pretending that he does their emotions. Like, I think he's pretending that he doesn't care that she's been ran through. Oh, dude, imagine that. How many plates he was smashing that night. You never told me about all that front line. <laughs> well, the, yeah, and then the worst part of the whole thing was that she made him wait. That, oh, was, that yeah. was that was that was the big thing. Is like she smashed all these dudes after just meeting them for like a, a short period of time. She, she brag, brags about blowing Bible. a guy in a football stadium during a game. And like, wait, was he on the field, field or? I I don't know. <laughs> Under the know, bleachers man. or in the bleachers, I guess. Bathroom. It sounds yeah. So she's so, like was a turbo whore, and then so but she, she didn't she turbo made, whore for him. She made yeah. she made Will wait. No, no, no she made uh, <laughs> Logan. Oh, you're talking about Logan. Oh, yeah, that that chick. Yeah, I don't I'm know, sure man. I think that's a question. I, I bet I bet Jada made Will Smith wait too. I put money like, on it. I was just talking about this on my my stream yesterday. I think it was. It, it was like maybe. Yeah, it was yesterday. It was. It was. Uh, it, these guys, they, they they have that Madonna whore complex, right? Where they they think that if she's if she's putting out on a first date, then uh, oh somehow she's not wifey material. But oh, if she holds out. Oh, she's pure. It's like, yeah. dude, she she's the same she, chick no, that she, fucked this other guy on the first date. Yeah, she just she, doesn't like you, bro. Yeah. Filtering for yeah. a girl that lies. Your better. game, your game is weak. That's what yeah. it means. Your game is weak. Mm -hmm. Your game is much weaker than the guy she smashed on the first night, or the twenty guys she smashed on the first night. Uh, I think you get around that too, right? Like if you're just not dating one girl at a time. If he's dating five girls, yeah, this one didn't put out, but we'll keep her around. She can have her little three month thing. But then mm -hmm. at the end of that three months, he's still got a choice between five girls. And if she's yep. guaranteed, like what's that rule? Iron Tomasi rule. The girl that makes you wait is never worth it. Mm -hmm. I guarantee in those three months that those girls are putting out, those ones probably also bake cookies. And so he's like, yeah, why do I need you? I get the sex and the cookies or just the cookies. Mm -hmm. Right. I like, I love cookies. I love sex. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's cookies are that good. In fact, if anybody in chat, if any of your cookies are that good, Post a recipe. I will try it. And if it works, I'll send you $100. <laughs> That's how much I want to see these good cookies that are worth the pussy. <laughs> Three months. Mm. Oh, no, no. These ones are definitely. <laughs> Joe Rogan's wife, too. No. I knew she was a single mom when he met. Oh, uh, but she made Joe wait. Damn it. That's why he's always worried about whether grizzly bears will fight baboons and who will win on that. <laughs> <laughs> Sexually frustrated, he's like, I'm taking it out on animal violence. <laughs> I'm gonna start a podcast, you know, with the frustration now, 100 million dollars. And he's like, Thanks, babe, for making me wait. It made me focus on what was important <laughs> alien abductions and DMT advertisements. <laughs> Which I shouldn't shit on Joe Rogan, John. That's gonna really like alienate your audience, guys. I like Joe. We're just having, I'm some already, fun. I'm already alienated <laughs> from that group. Don't worry, really? we're never we're never going to be invited. On I, this podcast. I spoke way too much. I was invited, but I, I turned it down because I had stuff going on. Oh, fair enough. Cool. That was a long time ago, though. Okay, I thought you were going to save some controversial opinion like moose meat isn't that good. You shouldn't have to hunt for food or something. And everybody's like, oh, <laughs> news radio wasn't nice. This guy, son of a. <laughs> Damn, though. But yeah, look at all these guys. Do you remember? Actually, John, you might have been around. Paul, you might not have. Do you remember how like every two months? We had a, a looks money game episode on this fucking podcast. <laughs> they were at the point at the end there where even we were kind of clowning on each other. Like, hey, is it looks money game again? Is it Tuesday? <laughs> and I think it's fair to say that game one, because looks didn't, Logan's a good looking guy. So is Jake. They're mm -hmm. gorgeous. If I was, like, I'm not, but if I was. No, game, game, game is everything. The game and yeah. frame, like. Yeah. Will Smith you, has what? You gotta billion have He's got Oprah money. He still got Will, cucked. Will Smith, yeah. uh, Independence Day, peak Will Smith was, 
you know, a lot of chicks were were all, all yeah. about that guy when I was in high school. Well, yeah, didn't you have a <clears throat> didn't you have a thing with Margot Robbie too? There's pictures Probably. of them, there's pictures of them together. He looks very happy. I wouldn't be surprised if he was also with Taya Leone after the Bad Boys dated for a bit. There's no way they didn't. And she was dude. I don't know if anybody remembers yeah, no. her. Remember Taya Leone, Bad Boys, the chick there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until David yeah, Duchovny swiped her up. We're like, oh man. Not since losing uh, Catherine Zeta Jones did I feel like like humanity lost <laughs> because of one man and his selfishness. <laughs> not letting us all think we had a chance. Of course, then she turned crazy. God damn you, Michael Douglas! <laughs> for, yeah, for taking you, Catherine Michael Zeta Douglas. Jones from. <laughs> Here's your catchphrase for the show. We'll change the thumbnail. Have like a damn you, Michael Douglas, right in the middle of it. Like, what is this about? <laughs> and then they have to watch for thirty minutes to be. Oh, well, now I get it. Good show. Good show. Here upon the picture. Um, if you stay to protect your child, you have no <laughs> illusions. A broken person is broken. Yeah, but that, oh yeah, he was too. Fair enough. Yeah, so to give that well, up. Jada come on. Why? Why did you let that go, Will? Why didn't you? Yeah. Or who knows, man? Maybe, maybe we're all wrong. Maybe we're all wrong, and he still Will's out there just slaying. Oh, <laughs> dude. Maybe that's what you had right to maybe he's just on the lowdown he's just slaying it maybe he's tiger woods status man maybe we just don't know imagine that though like i i can picture rollo giving a 20 minute gynocentric social order talk right now about he's slaying out there but he has to play the part of a cuck to salvage his career because of the gynocentric social order that yeah because he's, he's gotta work for woke hollywood right so you can't yeah. you can't you can't be red pilled and, and pimping and what but what about yeah. george clooney George Clooney was fucking the older player woman. forever. Didn't he marry that older woman? That yeah, then the they UN? broke up. Like they they divorced like a, a year later or something like that. I think he's yeah. he's back on the market. Oh, good for him. He and Brad Pitt can do it. He does. Uh, he gives, he gives money. Year old Leo DiCaprio girls. He gives. Uh, Clooney gives a lot of money to like certain charities and stuff. So I think he gets a pass. Oh. For his goody two shoe ness. He donates to the uh, anti paragliding tactical paragliding funds. <laughs> That's about as much of a euphemism as I'm willing to do. I'm not getting your channel in that trouble. Yeah. <laughs> not going there. <laughs> <laughs> got three oh. parentheses. I got a paraglide. We don't. We aren't no. the same. Oh, apparently Clooney's still married. Okay. Yeah, isn't that the same one? The East Indian girl works for the UN. She's like Lebanese. Yeah, something like that. <sighs> She's That's Lebanese. Funny. I'm looking at Wikipedia now. Oh, I, yeah, I, so I don't normally weird. keep up with this bullshit, but. Something okay. desert. Yeah, I can't stand celebrity garbage. I, all right, I she's she's forty five. I but she looks fucking hot for forty five. You know, I I would. You know, she's older. He's, than me. he's got like he's got she's forty five, but he's got like twenty years on her. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Clooney's almost sixty or sixties now or something. Isn't he? He, he's sixty two. Yeah. 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 Notice those age gap relationship people don't seem to care when she's forty and he's sixty. But if you're twenty five and he's forty five, all of a sudden it's like, oh, what a pedo. Just saying. <laughs> Hopefully those chick. If you one of those chicks are in the chat and you want to like sp spurg out, please do. The the fun. older you you get as a man, the that uh, half your age plus seven rule of thumb keeps yep. getting longer and longer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I bet you if sixty year old women were on Twitter, they'd be so mad at Clooney though for dating those forty five year olds and not a girl that's his age. Right. Scooping, I think that's the issue. Scooping up our. Scooping up our George Clooney. Well, no, seriously. <laughs> like, uh... Millennial women aren't getting shacked up. They're not getting in relationships. They're like the sexless men for women. Mm -hmm. So what are they doing? Yelling at men online. Every single one of us are the devil, depending on what day of the week it is. They're wig towel. The period. They're wig towel. Yeah. Wig towels? I like that. I've got uh, uh, this this gal I, I was running uh, marathons with. I was training marathons with her. She moved out here and... Um, <laughs> This is actually a funny story. This is kind of like a related to Jada Pinkett wearing the pants type thing, right? Except for her husband actually had some a little bit of gumption, okay? So she, before moving out here, she tells her husband, hey, I want to move out to the Western Slope of Colorado. And he's like, yeah, sure, babe. Yeah, sure, whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And she just takes that as, okay. So she, sight unseen, buys her house out here and then moves out here. <laughs> And she's like, okay, huh. when are you moving with me? And he's like, yeah, yeah, about that. Uh, yeah, no, I can't do that yet. I got, I got my job. I got my job, right? <laughs> Just kept, keeps pushing it off, pushing it off. She's spending a lot of time with me 
he comes out here and sees that she's spending a lot of time with me running and stuff. Right. And right. like no, nothing's going on with us. Cause I am not interested in her at all, but cause she's fucking crazy, but uh, she's fun to run with. And he sees that. And so he starts like getting pissed at her for like, Oh, you're fucking that Paul guy. You're fucking that Paul guy. And she's like, no, I swear. I swear. And so he's like, well, I'm not moving out there. I'm not moving out there. Finally. She's just like, all right, well fuck it. Um, let's, let's get a divorce. So he's like, okay, good. <laughs> so they ended up they ended Jeez. up getting a divorce over the, that kind of shit but yeah that, good times. that almost sounds like the norm mcdonald moth joke i'm like oh man that punchline <laughs> gets me every time <laughs> all right i'm done with this <laughs> it's funny and then so now so then uh so now she hates men she fucking hates men and she's like she you know she can't find a good guy on the western slope and uh you know so she hates all fucking men now and, and i'm just like oh perfect you're your your wig tap that's great <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's just a weird one i heard in new york there was a trend where a lot of girls were getting divorced and then because they couldn't find a man who wanted them that they also wanted they would turn into lesbians for a couple of years until they find one and then they find their heterosexuality again mm -hmm. yeah look at that see like th those those wig towels they they <laughs> uh they at least have a plan you know well, like, they're literally they yeah by going their own way at least they're getting somebody even if it is lesbian bed death <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine that though, some guy's like, "Oh, women ain't worth it," and just starts sucking dick, and then five uh, years later finds a unicorn, right? Leaves that all behind him. He's not like that anymore. <laughs> He's changed. He's not into that. Man, Makes her we, wait three months for a paycheck. I don't know. Just thinking of what the internet's gonna look like in like ten years with the nonsense. Like it's bad enough with like celebrities and you know their their garbage relationships. Like what, what's, you know, we're going to hear about this streamer star. Oh no. Her trove of secret only fans gangbang videos have been released. Oh no. Like I'm not, I'm not looking forward to the internet in the future. Dude, it's bad now. It's not even celebrities now. Now it's just regular people. Like what's that latest viral one? The girl that didn't get out of a guy's car during a date because she didn't oh, want yeah, to go to the Cheesecake he took Factory. To, he took a Cheesecake Factory. Oh, my god. I looked goodness. at that. I'm like, these people are either the stupidest people on earth or this is staged. Like, that's what I hate, where I can't tell. Is it retarded or staged? I st oh, my girl and I are still arguing over it. Do you think it was staged? Do you think that was actually real? Do you think there was this ugly chick that was so entitled that she refused to get out of the car? Or that other one that ate, like, $200 worth of uh, oysters, oysters at the bar and the guy just bounced? <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll Venmo you the drinks, babe. <laughs> She's slurping with the TikTok out, dude. If you're ever on a date and you see your girl start holding your her phone up to her face, like you're being put in a blast. Get out of there. Yeah, they don't even talk to the guys on both of these videos. The chicks were talking to their phone, Under not even the, the guy. Phone. Yeah, I thought guys are the ones supposed to have attention spans and only play video games all day. Girls won't even look down from the talk. Mm -hmm. They're just uh, pawns in their in their game. Yeah, marketing funnels. What does Rolo say? We're example. we're all brands now. We're all brands of one now. Yeah, mm. I think Roosh. I think I, Roosh was like I think the original one that started that. Mm. Where he said everybody had to be a brand, but he kind of he didn't really pursue it enough. That's why I kind of like Rolo still keeping that torch burning. It's not it's not wrong. I mean, you you're you're <laughs> you are you are you got a brand because your outward persona is going to be looked at by employers, employees. Mm -hmm. possible romantic partners like i don't know how you can get away with it and not and not have a brand you know well, it's because it's going to become the the thing where <clears throat> you need to develop your brand along with your frame yeah i think that's the problem is a lot of these people have created these these brands that have nothing to do with their frame so the online persona is 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 fake and you Dude, can't those, maintain that fakeness very long. Those are hilarious because I see when they get put on blast, it's always somebody just takes a screenshot of one of the things that they've done as content. And then the other guy loses his mind. Like no commentary, nothing. It's always just this you. And that's all it takes. But I mean, we used to do this. Paul, I don't know if you were single then. Do you remember like when first Facebook's heyday was like 2008 and that? Probably get it with Instagram now. But when you go on a date with a girl, John, you probably see this now. Where they once they get your phone number, they plug it into the social and they start like scouring and trying to do like a mm. Netflix. Well, I've, I've been I haven't been dating because I've I've uh, I've had my girl for a while actually, now. Uh, actually, that's yeah, what but, uh, Nurse but did to me. She will, yeah. 
but my girl, they, 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 you know, she's younger. So like they, they scour everything, like all of your, she still go routinely goes through all of my things to see what I've liked and who's commented on all my stuff. Mm -hmm. And if I accidentally liked a butt picture somewhere, like there's going to be trouble. <laughs> You should almost do bait ones with that. Like get some really like cottage cheese, giant, horrible looking one and like it just to see if word gets back. <laughs> Put like that's some what... hashtag code on that caught you bitch or something. That's, that's actually what I, what I tell guys you, you sort of want to do though, when you're out dating is, is, uh, ask chicks a bunch of questions on a, on, on a date. Not, not like an interrogation, right. But just get to know her more and then only just give a little bit about yourself, right? Because yeah. you want to be that mystery that they have to solve. So they they go and do the the whole, you know, Batman detective thing online, trying to figure out who who the fuck is this guy? Because because yeah, yeah, nurse chick did that to me. She I, I wouldn't tell her what I did for a living. I didn't tell her anything. She tried to be friends with me on Facebook. I, I declined it and said, you know what, we're not there yet. And she was like, what the fuck? I gotta know more about this guy. She found the podcast by digging online. Like that's, that's that'd be funny on the date. She starts asking, like, so what do you think about this Will Smith thing? And then just no, staring she, at you, see if your opinion changes the thing. She, it, you know what she did? She, uh, man, it might have been like the fourth date. She brought up hypergamy out of nowhere, and I'm like, nobody says this in normal conversation, right? Like yeah. this is my my thought, and I'm just like, she she's she's found my shit online, like. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love. My girl has never said that word. She doesn't know. She doesn't, she doesn't watch know. This stuff. I don't blame her. I wouldn't watch this stuff either. We're horrible. <laughs> nurse Chick listens to every fucking episode. Really? It's, yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, she, nurse Chick, thanks for your likes and subscribes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah she, she, she follows I can see from from experience, <laughs> being like you could tell when the date wasn't going well is when she just kept asking questions. When it was just like one question after another question, I couldn't get in to ask questions and turn it around to get her to open up. And she's just like hounding me. I was like, this is, this is not going well. This is, <laughs> we need to get out of here. I, I was, uh, if Let a chick started fast. doing that to me, I would say, whoa, 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 whoa. I'll answer that question after you answer this to turn it around mm -hmm. because who's ever asking the questions is in control of the conversation, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm really stupid. I'm not super high. About. I'm not super high energy. Like I don't want to have to be like, uh, uh, and then whatever. So if the girl comes in high energy, I've had that, and she's just, I'm just, like, uh, she's in the chat right now. Look, yeah, <laughs> yeah I can see that though. It could be it's flustering. That's actually how they do interrogations for a lot of time when they want to catch people in lies. It mm -hmm. splits them with questions because the guy doesn't have time to think up a lie. Mm -hmm. But it's always it was always the older chicks who are like, they've got their checklist and they're looking for that hut, you know, they're 30, 30 to 35. And they're like, mm -hmm. like, it it's a, like a fucking job what, interview. What's your, what's your retirement portfolio look like? You know? <laughs> well, it makes like, sense how they have such a long list. Cause like every guy they've dated has not wanted to stick around. So essentially they just got a laundry list of everything a guy would ever do. And this is their no list. And then mm -hmm. they wonder why they can't find a man. It's like, maybe the issue wasn't any of that stuff. Maybe it was just the ones you're attracted to have more options. So either change your attraction or get a fake boob job. I don't know. Pick one. I don't just, like fakes, but a lot of guys it. are like, you know, I'll take fake, I'll take fake D's over single A's, whatever. No judgment. <laughs> I I don't know, man. I used to think that, but uh, the the tranny thing is too much. If I could, <laughs> well, if I could test, I can't. If, I, if can't, I could touch them, they're they're real enough. That's that's my thought. But then you that. feel her her penis <laughs> rubbing on your leg. Yeah, fair enough. I that's a little too real. You're, that's you're touching real boobs real. and <laughs> penis is touching you. Uh, that's a little nope. too natural for me. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I surgery. no longer have an opinion on on uh, looks until I see you naked. Yeah, and I get it. The heart wants what I it see, wants, and, and your a, heart doesn't a blood, want a dick. I see a blood test. <laughs> yeah, I don't want a dick. I don't want a penis. A blood or a phantom test. penis. Wait a minute. What's this? It heightened levels of the H three hormone. We need to talk. <laughs> so speaking of wanting neck tickling. Want, Wait a yep. minute. What is this? <laughs> Spe Check her elbows. Make sure they're pointing the right way. Speaking <laughs> of wanting eyes, dicks, let's uh, let's talk about Will Smith. Um, so how how did how did that rumor get get around that he was he might be uh, uh Jada the might same be his way any rumor starts any guy that does anything that's unattractive he must be gay. Mm. Oh okay. We've always been. I got three well, guys I mean, calling I me think in the a chat lot of it... now for these Superman Clark Kent 1980s glasses I have to wear now. I think some of it was the fact that you know he was a a rapper in the 90s mm -hmm. who didn't do gangster rap. 
Oh yeah, I think that cuss. was. I think there was a lot of hate put towards him because he didn't. He didn't cuss. Didn't talk about shooting people up. It was like happy fun music, you know, summer summertime. It wasn't like summertime. Shoot you in the face, bitch. But you know what's funny about Selling that? Rocks. Ice Cube was an architect, and Will Smith was grazed in the ghettos in Philadelphia. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, he's the one that doesn't swear, and Ice Cube's with an AK. I'm just. I don't know what to drink of this. It all makes no sense. Yep. <laughs> But that, I mean, that could be part of it is because they thought Will was soft and they said Will was soft for a long time and he didn't have any, you know, left coast, right coast beef. He wasn't in the Tupac and whatever death row and whatever shit. So oh, yeah, I that think that good. some of that, some of that probably could have come from that. He found the guy that shot. Tupac and then he did, he did which. play a gay character early in his career. Wait, what? Which one? I can't remember. Which movie? Was, I can't remember. Oh, no, I gotta look this up. Actually, yeah. ugh, it's a bad search thing. Will Smith gay movie. <laughs> I'm afraid to hit enter. <laughs> oh, now it's gonna six be degrees yeah. of separation. Okay, I know the one. Thank God. Hey, Paul, and, yeah. <laughs> six degrees of separation. Please don't be porn up. Please. Don't be... <laughs> that was like the rule zero version of the movie Deer Hunter. Yeah, that, and no. that was that was 1993. That was 1993. Yeah, I, well, I could see I one. could see how some of those rumors could start from just within the hip hop industry because, hey, man, he like all the hardcore gangster stuff was happening in 93. He does a gay role movie and he's singing, you know, happy go lucky rap music. I could see I could see where somebody in the hood who's jealous of his success would be like, that dude's gay. He's <laughs> totally gay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Jesus. I'm going to send you guys something in private chat. This is just ridiculous. About the Will Smith one. Oh, Moody was asking, was the Manosphere about straight boxing or MMA? Neither. It was pro wrestling, bro. The yeah. only real sport left. You know what that was? That was <laughs> stupid. Because uh, Tate did kickboxing, so he had to assume everybody else needed to be a kickboxer. Myron yeah. trained for six months in boxing, so he challenged everybody to boxing matches. It's that whole be like me at work for me crap. Yeah. Like if yeah, John I like Rifter, and, everybody and, here would have had to do me MMA. Otherwise, they didn't have the right to talk or anything. <laughs> but luckily, John's not an idiot, so he just doesn't do that. <laughs> I highly suggest everybody learns how to fight, though, for self True. defense and oh, sure. self confidence reasons. I think it's very important. Yeah, there's also an element of, you know, a lot of guys don't know how to make friends, and there's a great there's a great opportunity to meet some really good, cool people of all different types of uh, economic backgrounds and mm -hmm. work type situations if you're in a martial arts gym if you're if you're learning muay thai if you're learning jujitsu if you're learning those things there's uh good communities available yeah and that's all it takes a friend from the mma gym maybe you guys go out for drinks on the weekend yep. with a group and Get all of a sudden a there fight. you have a friend that you do two things with and he finds <laughs> out you both like a third thing you have three pivots and that's like friendship there you go Friend from work ends up coming over for dinner one day with his wife and kids, and then you go to the movies, and now you got a best friend somehow. Just talking like, like a date. Just learning, learning some kind of martial art gives you <laughs> something that makes you interesting for one, and then two, uh, it gives you that sense of community with anybody else that that has trained in any kind of fight. You know, then you could talk about which style's better, and then you know. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to talk about, really. Right, like, what are we yeah. talking? We're talking about Will Smith. We've managed to sit here for 45 minutes talking to each other. Like a bunch yeah. of like a bunch of old friends talking about the war. <clears throat> There's not many wars going on right now, though, so you have to talk about Will Smith. Uh we're 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 avoiding the, the actual yeah. war going on. We're not we're talking gonna avoid. about bullshit. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I saw it on TV. It's pretty it's impressive. <laughs> Everybody's just sitting there holding burning babies. I'm right, yeah. look. I'm right, look. I'm like, and F it, trophies for clout is really it, taking a dark turn. And then, yeah, and, and not yeah, exactly. Oh, bro, that's that's next level. It's dark. It is. Then, this is next level fuck trophy stuff. And then everybody's arguing about AI. Every this is AI, that's AI. <laughs> this isn't real. Like, just it's an inside job. I know. Yeah. Doesn't it feel like two thousand and two all over again? Oh man, it's either wild. with us or against us. And how right. and how fast everything else just disappeared. Yeah. Nobody's no. I don't see anybody talking about drag queen story hour. I don't hear anybody talking about, you know, and like and think about the last, you know, almost ten years. Um, nobody was talking about terrorist attacks the last like five seven years probably. There wasn't yeah. it, that disappeared. Why did it disappear? And now it's back. 
mm-hmm. but the trans stuff is on the back burner and it's just more thank god though open mirrors. i'm so sick of the <laughs> trans bullshit <laughs> <laughs> and and you can know you know how like my minor it is and how small yeah. of a thing it is is like oh. when somebody posts like a, a outrageous video, everybody sees it because there's only the one. Yeah, instantly. <laughs> right. It's not like there's you're not flooded with ten thousand images of some kind of weird trans stuff going on. No, it's like one video of one incident and everybody's making a big deal out of it, making a comment on it. There's one video. It's a few seconds long, and then there'll be millions of commenters playing it and talking about it and making a huge deal out of it. What's well, like a uh, school shootings, you know, school yeah. shooting, well, you know, like, the, sorry. Yeah. The school shootings. Yeah. You know, the worst part of it though, like when you see that you hear about this event, like, uh, I don't know, the paragliding in that music conference thing mm-hmm. or, you know, Will Smith's things mm-hmm. doing this, you go to like, let me see what they're talking about. And have you ever tried to look up the original video of anything like that Alabama boat brawl? I remember that. I looked that up. I found, 5,000 content creator commentaries on it, making careers, not one shot of the original thing. Not one. Hmm. Yeah, that, that does get annoying. Where you're like, what mm-hmm. what the fuck are, is everybody talking about? <laughs> and then you go and try to like, find can, the original. Can, Plato's Cave, man. It's essentially Plato's Cave. And what have else you are you going to do but just like distance yourself from it? Like, I don't care. John, have you seen yes. the, the golf the golfer guy who like pulls his shirt off and he's like, you want to meet God? Yeah. <laughs> no. What the hell? That was that's hilarious. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen that, Ryan? No, I have no idea what this oh, is. God. Is that that guy who always, who's like out of shape? He, he he's not in that great of shape, but someone like, I guess hit a golf ball near him and he like lost his shit and took their golf ball away and was like, wanting to throw down it, 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 it he's like man he must have been like late 40s early 50s or something like that and then he wanted to throw down on the golf course so he pulls his shirt off and starts flexing on him. <laughs> it's Was hilarious. It a green got... shirt yes oh, there yes. you go i see I, found I, it. I got it for you i got it for everybody oh you got it oh yeah here we go that's the one you, you took her ball a silly argument over get this a little golf ball is about to take a truly bizarre turn oh here we go you see that oh. that's what you look up in the heaven <laughs> you want to test god you <laughs> the mad as hell golfer's <laughs> furious reaction is reminding many of this don't make me angry yep the incredible hulk <laughs> I would Look, remind you of the golf ball. shirt is green. Jeez. Ken Look. Davis recorded the video being seen <laughs> around the world at a he private a golf course in Michigan. Because awesome. we kind of fear for our life for a little bit, just how crazy the guy was. We never expected him to take his shirt off, but I guess he had to do what he did, and he did it. The incredible Hulk golfer who got so fired up was identified as 41-year-old John Reeb. Hey, guys. This guy's 41. Oh, oh 41. they put his name on blast? They doxed him? Those guys do better do better if you're gonna if you're gonna yell at people if you're gonna take your shirt off and flex and talk about going to heaven and being god be in better goddamn shape yeah i'm, I'm, <laughs> go to, I'm, go I'm, to the fucking gym. I'm not in great shape right now all right this is me out of shape i'm 45 <laughs> quit being <Yeah>. pussies <laughs> train be hard like before guy. you go fighting on the golf course or at least just saying. don't take your shirt off Come on. <laughs> yeah leave the shirt on at least <laughs> And this is all collected, right? Like, look, what is what is all of this? The Will Smith thing, the this thing, the falling for propaganda 2001 style. It's all guys being overly emotional, being manipulated. Because yes. that limbic brain bypasses your frontal lobe making decisions. The babies, the babies. Yeah. Come on, bro. You have to give more money to the government because of the babies. Oh, and I yeah, was busy giving my government money for uh, climate change or COVID. It's crazy how it solves everything, but doesn't, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Keep giving us money while we print more. It's all easy manipulation. That's how Logan or whichever Paul got uh, got to date with that whore that made him wait three months. Emotional manipulation because mm-hmm. you fall for it because you're stupid. And guys don't have to be stupid, but we're you're just stupid, so or, good you, at or it. you have no options. Yeah. I think those are kind of connected. Smart guys are at least smart enough to know. Like I need to work on my options. <laughs> I, you know what? I don't know though. That, that's what I would like to see some numbers on is uh iq levels of guys who like have good frame and don't put up with shit and and guys that are easily manipulated with emotions is it the smarter guys who can avoid it because i don't know there's a lot of academics who you would think are considered really smart people and i feel like they are the most easily manipulated 
I actually have a video on this. There was some research, which uh, it was about dogs, though, to showing that the smarter the breed of dog was, the easier they are to train. And so I made a video showing this, the smartest dogs, the easiest to train being how guys, we think we're so clever and we're the alpha male and whatever. And girls just flip that around and then top from the bottom, call you a really big, strong man. Can you please go do that for me? And then the guy's like, yeah, taught that bitch while he's going to do whatever for her. <laughs> but I, I, I'm with you. I 100% agree. Yeah. Smart people are really good at justifying things for themselves and lying to themselves. Yeah. Because I mean, I think, I think being intellectually smart doesn't make you. No, it just makes you really good at detecting patterns or mm. creatively creating connections. You'd think you'd understand that manipulation pattern, though. But no, but I feel like a lot. I mean, think about how many guys are, you know, how many prisoners are like the alpha, alpha seed guys. Oh, yeah, you know, they're not. They're, yeah, they're not smart. They weren't. They weren't smart enough not to get caught. <laughs> you know, I got so caught like, and you still let me knock you up. What's the problem with you, lady? You know. And their it's emotionalism true. led them into prison in the first place, you know, a lot of yeah. times, especially the guys that are in there for murder. <laughs> Wasn't that the alpha thing? If you put too much alpha into your life, you're either going to end up dead or in prison. That's why a little bit of beta wouldn't be the worst thing for you. <coughs> Andrew, Andrew Tate, excuse me. <laughs> bit of a COVID cough. <laughs> you can't tell me Long I'm not COVID. right or tell me I'm not wrong. So smart, he's stupid. Everybody's talking about he was brilliant. Yeah. If he was really brilliant, he would have realized, keep my mouth shut about the money laundering. <laughs> allegedly. Sorry, allegedly. allegedly. The alleged yeah. money laundering that I bragged about doing. The alleged lover boy. Me yeah, whatever. <laughs> Will Smith. I can't believe he slapped Chris Rock over a roommate spat. That sucks. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> it, it's, such a, it's such a weird. It's such a weird thing, man. That whole situation. That's emotional. Everybody's emotional. Even in the chat, there's people in here just throwing shit at us just because it's like, it gives me a little bit of a dopamine hit or them, not me. It's like, I don't need to hear about, uh, somebody said you were bad at wrestling. Somebody said I had five chins. Somebody was asking John about his uh, equipment, which I don't know if they were talking about your dick or you bought some new training equipment. No, I've got some stuff. I got oh, a okay, couple good. new toys in the, in the gym. <laughs> it's one of my regular watchers. So I was like, yeah, if your audience is asking about your dick on a regular basis, something's up. That's yeah. that's a question that's you ask uh, you ask someone that just uh, had the the tr transition surgery, right? How's oh, the new yeah. equipment? <laughs> it's great. They turned my forearm into one. It's great. Oh man! <laughs> Wait, she slept with his kid's friend. Uh, yeah, that that was uh, that's one of the things. There that was, was the, the one... entanglement thing, right? The oh. entanglement. That was the that was, and that's the public one we know about that got leaked. So, like, who knows? She might have been sleeping with more than one of their friends. Well, I mean, even uh, what's the safe? Steve Harvey's wife slept with the pool boy and the, the yeah. security guard or whatever it was. Allegedly. Allegedly. allegedly sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to have to assume allegedly every time I run my mouth because it's yeah. just safer. <laughs> we'll just run a banner at the bottom. Everything we say, it's alleged. But I mean, every single every single example you've given John or Paul or me, they're all the same. Guy deludes himself because he's so smart. He knows better. He lives off of his emotions. The girl runs roughshod over him. And then he has to sit there dealing with the fallout of looking like a complete moron on national TV or the world stage. Mm -hmm. And how many, and it, yeah, I get it for most guys in the audience. They're like, you know, 50,000 a year, you know, in Milwaukee or something, but still it's the same process just on smaller scale. So if anything you could learn from this, and I know it's a really crappy thing to learn for the misery of others, but Hey, if Pat Stedman can teach us about how to be a man, anybody can. <laughs> One thing that I, I, people people don't realize is that it, you know we only use five percent of our brain, and that that's that's the cognitive like in the moment thinking. Ninety five oh, really? percent of the shit we do is subconscious programs that run in yep. run in in our the back that's of our head. Body language is so important. Yeah. Well, I know you can't lie about it. Uh, Joe Navarro was talking about that at the convention. We shall not speak of where people like they try to lie and they can lie with their words, but with their body language, it's, it's limbic. They literally, yep. even if they know they're doing it, they can't stop doing it. You'll ask them a yes or no question and they'll say no. Oh, mm -hmm. that one was, I remember that was common. Right? Yeah. People will shake their yes, head and nod. I totally believe that. <laughs> the honest answer while they're lying yeah. to your face. Or it's yeah. uh they, they look uh, up and to the left. That's their, they're lying. If they look up to the right, they're remembering, you yeah. know, 
I'm learning that in NLP. I'm learning NLP. Mm. Really? I'm learning that by watching all of the people shitting on us on their podcasts. That's all they well, do. They're, they're all like this. What's <laughs> crazy with all that stuff is the the psychopaths, they don't they don't display those uh those tells. Mm -hmm. well, that's right. Yeah, because they they're part of their brain is broken. Yeah. Uncle so Touchy like they don't... in the wrong part of the Amandula Blangata. <laughs> No, I'm not joking. It really is. Mandula Amblangata. Yeah, you don't put a cigarette in a guy's head, and then he'll cause the brain damage. Then he becomes a psychopath. Sure, he's strangling kittens, but he'll be really great as a CEO. I think that's why women might be attracted to sociopaths because they can't get a read on it. They like unintentionally have the, it's the too mysterious. Yeah, like is yeah. he? Isn't he? <laughs> With that little bit of violence attached to it that they'll get from the Mondango in prison. I don't know if it's the real George Bruno. Um, they said other men's mistakes are great teachers. God knows I've made enough. Yeah, that sounds like George. <laughs> he, uh, I mean, he, he's he's right though. I, but the thing is, most guys don't look at other guys' mistakes, you know. And that's uh, that, that's one of the reasons why I, you know I tell my story all the time on the podcast is because I want guys to not make the mistakes I did, you know. Yeah. But. Uh, they won't. They'll all make the same damn mistakes. They have to learn the hard way. We all do. <laughs> well, that's why I like a lot of the red pill stuff that we talk about here, because it's not so much don't make these mistakes. It's that if this is the action you take, this is what the consequences are going to be. Knowing the guy is going to make those mistakes, he has to learn it the hard way. So at the very least, he has that safety net of, okay, I did exactly what he said not to do. It had the exact effect he said it was going to have. And this is the exact result that I need to expect. So what can I do about it? So at least it's something, right? Even if it's not us preaching into the microphone about how be a better man for Jesus and women. <laughs> that's their yeah. only solution. We, we like, need to make oh, women make be better. Mistake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> make a woman better. Never never more than one. We're going you know, to change all the make laws. all women better. We've got we're gonna, to. We're going to repeal it's up to the us. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Make women better. No more abortions. You can't divorce me, and you're not allowed to vote. I solved it. <laughs> there we go. There you go. No more no fault divorce. Also, yeah. All Dude, our fixed. competition is horrible. <laughs> now, horrible. now that we did those things, they'll love us. Mm -hmm. They'll love <laughs> us and want to be with us. Not one conversation about making a girl like incentivizing her to liking you by being valuable. Never in mm -hmm. there. I guess that's the difference though, because that means the other guy has to do some work on his own, as opposed to everybody else doing it for him. Mm -hmm. And it kind of throws a wrench in the narrative of uh, we're all the same. We're equal. Oh yeah. Because why do guys have to do this extra stuff if the girls don't? Because we don't if have you're, a if you're raised being told all the time that oh no, boys and girls are exactly the same. Everybody feels exactly the same. Everybody re reacts to the same things the right way, and this is how you're supposed to do it. Why? Why would you think that you need to? You need to produce something to make her attracted to you. Yeah. Why do I have to change my name? My name. That Michael Bolton guy is the guy that sucks, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a callback, guys. You like yeah. that? Yeah. For the audience, here's an experiment you can run if you think girls and boys are the same. Go home with your girl, wife, girlfriend, whatever. Go watch like one of them fail blog things where it's like the skateboarder trying to ride a rail and then gets nutted. And think about how you like you know that feeling where your nuts start to hurt. And then look over at your girl and ask her of hers. And if she says yes, then yes, men and women are equal. If not, then you kind of got your experiment. I'll tell you right now, except for maybe that one weird guy, two red sprites, none of you guys probably have your girlfriend's nuts hurting when she wants to skateboard. You're hit. I'm just calling it now. Man, this was so much better when I made the bit up, but like the delivery was just trash. <laughs> <laughs> Points for effort. <laughs> yeah. Two red sprites. <laughs> Okay. No, <laughs> it's just the first name I saw. I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, "What is he? Saying? Is he talking shit?" I don't... Yeah. <laughs> so what? Uh, back on back on the topic here. What what are the? Uh, I don't know, ma'am. There was somebody in the chat who mentioned that they uh, they stayed together. Um, for the kids, and. I don't, I don't, I, I, it's such a weird thing. You know, I, I, I have a hard time believing that that could be actually the best thing for everybody. But they did, they, they didn't stay together though. Cause they've been separated for seven years. So they're not together. It's all, it's all. Okay. It's so all they, yeah, they weren't, they weren't in the, in the same house. They lived in separate locations. Yeah. Jada just dropped that bomb like this last week. 
that no no so, we've been we've been physically separated for seven years so it's not even staying for the kid it's just some it's an irish divorce visual, visual thing milk. yeah it's a it's a yeah just keep up it's just for publicity yeah publicity and that's that's this makes me hate her even more because you know she was like oh yeah let's do all this like loving family bullshit so like he was coming from his apartment somewhere to the house and the kids would be there and then they'd film some shit act like they're a fucking happy family that's just so grotesque oh yeah well she tapped into it because he had that whole absent father thing growing up so she knew that was his soft spot so if he played to that of course he would do it i don't ever want to be as bad as my dad i'll do all this goofy shit you're telling me what to do man i think that's how a lot of the exes uh manipulate their husbands into stuff tapping into that whole because a lot of guys that's the way they don't want to divorce they're terrified of being a bad father not raising bad kids but just being a bad father and so a lot of the girls will milk that well you should pay this child support you don't want to be a bad dad do you it's crazy how everything that benefits the woman is exactly the same stuff that makes you a good father or whatever it is you're insecure exactly. about exactly man. it's yeah. such it's such bullshit. I'm like, I'm sorry, I don't agree with you. I think it's it's I think it's child abuse. Yeah. I, I think if you're bringing around uh, some guy that you were fucking behind your your kids, your your husband's their father's back, I think that's abusive. I think that I don't think that's better. Oh, it isn't better because he only has two men around him. No, it's not. Yeah, it's I think it's child abuse. It's hard to make a case though. Like with guys, it's easy. If you're if you're smacking your kids around, that's assault. So it's easy to see it's violence. But a girl doing the divorce thing and the two dads and the kids mm -hmm. messed up 20 years from now by learning losing 50% of his earning power, it's hard to quantify that. Which kind of is what makes it worse. It's like cigarettes, oh. right? They didn't kill you well, for 20 years. So it took forever for us to realize mm -hmm. they might be bad for you. Well, even worse, it'd be like if the doctors were telling you, no, no, cigarettes are actually good it's your fault well, you're just well, they weak. technically were yeah so cigarettes are good it's actually your fault i mean they, yeah they were but like yeah they, four, four, if four out of five doctors preferred chesterfield Everybody because does. that's what that's what the <laughs> psychiatrist all that that whole industry is is doing is trying to tell men that it's okay that these women are doing horrible things yeah it's your fault you need you're you're jealous or you're bad or you have to do something else to accept their horridness yeah crazy isn't it hey speaking of that oh, what's up oh. hey what's up i'm on the wrong I thought camera you'd be deployed again uh we had meetings <laughs> their meetings may have taken place world war three is like every three months right now man it's crazy i don't know how you keep up i don't know <laughs> I, don't, I don't either this is why i'm in and out of here i was just on another call for some other stuff and i'm like i'll hop in and say hi i don't even know what we're talking about today how's everybody doing <laughs> we're, we're we're loosely talking about the uh the Jada Pinkett Will Smith nonsense and how they uh, we we just found out that they've been separated for seven years. So all oh, the, yeah. the, the slap that. thing was nonsense and you know everything's kayfabe and and then oh, we're yeah. also just bullshitting a lot too. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's I I mean a lot of us predicted like watching when she first they first started talking about things. You know, guys who pretty much everybody here. I mean, we're in the game. We know what's going on. We can see the body language. We can see the words that she say. It's like, no, dude, like this was just an August situation that she, they've been. She's been out of pocket for a long time. You know what I mean? And it's just it's just interesting. What really is interesting to me, though, which I don't know what you guys think about it or if you guys talked about it already, is how guys I feel like guys I mentioned this in the private chat, but I feel like guys with like self-esteem issues maybe more of the beta types or simping more type of guys like they do clout chase on women i feel like i mean like it's like it's like freaking okay jada hasn't been hot since like 1994 you know mm -hmm. jason's lyric okay like she was hot then i remember young but, hey in america though she's not fat so she's already right. way ahead of most other women. right but she's kind of a this bald, atrocious looking woman. Who who is fighting over her right now? But it's like these dudes, I don't understand. It's like, Will just pick up a hotter, better model. Like, you know, like that's all you have to do. Like, what's your what's your deal? But like Jada was in 94 to 96, like the chick to go after, you know what I mean? In those circles. Like she was like the hot chick. She was like the she was like the Pamela Anderson of, you know, though just the, those circles for a lot of guys, right? You have certain key people, J Lo. And it's like, I feel like these girls, as they age, although J Lo is aging very well, they don't always age well. Yet for some reason, it's like 
oh, well, I it, this like she's some sort of prize to pick up because all these guys are competing for her. It's like the same social proof competing thing that works with dudes works, you know, works with, you know, dudes when girls are competing for a guy seems to work for a lot of guys the other way around, if that makes any sense. Yeah, oh, sense. it's strange. It's, it's very strange because I never I feel like guys with a strong sense of self and self-esteem don't really care about that shit. Like, I don't care what my girl's status is. You know what I mean? Like, she looks good. She makes me happy. Like, that's yeah. <laughs> right. That's what yeah. I care about. But it's like. I feel like guys who want to elevate their status or something like that, you know, if they're not doing it through, you know, oh, I, I, ha I date all these, cool. I have a harem of w multiple women on a boat. If it's not that, it's like, you know, it's her looks. And if it's not that, it's some sort of social status. Like Jada Co had Coattail writers. What's that? Coattail writers. Yeah, it's like, it's almost, like, right. They've got no, nothing of they're, value to themselves. They're basically really. acting like women do, you know, like women, yeah. women like to, to, have a, a man that they brag about look at my my man he's mm -hmm. he's this guy he's the the ceo of a company they live their life through that when guys are doing the same thing they're acting like they're acting like women oh yeah yeah Dude, how many it's, trans it's, guys it's, when it's their crazy girl has just think... finished pregnancy and her boobs have grown they show her off on the on the gram it's everywhere <laughs> <laughs> yeah i just i feel like it's um you know it's it's a, a measure or a or a, maybe a demonstration of low value not that will thing is will smith's not low value but he he has to he feels low value there's no way i think he's self-concept you know because his behavior is not that of somebody who feels like he's worth a shit you know what i mean to, to women in the marketplace even though logically he may think so but he's been wrapped up in this bubble with this chick who's been subtly and slowly brain devaluing him over time dude this dude is Will Smith is a decent looking guy who's charismatic. He's got, you know, he's got a good personality, tons of success everywhere. There's like no reason he shouldn't just be pick, picking whatever relationship with whatever level of girl SMV he wants. I mean, literally as the pick, but he's because his emotions are wrapped up with this chick. It's like he probably doesn't think he's as valuable as he is. You know what I mean? And that was so mm -hmm. In those interviews and those conversations where he's just like, you know, tell him, tell him about what happened, Jada. You know, like, you know, it's like, they were humiliation rituals, man. I swear. Yeah. Yeah. It's just crazy. It's crazy. And I think it's a lesson for guys watching. It's like, status isn't everything, man. Like, you have to know this shit. You know, guys who know the shit that we talk about on Rule Zero mm -hmm. aren't going to get themselves in that situation. But I see it's, that, it's a little bit of center, center point of origin, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Because when you're when you're thinking that way, you're talking about that you're so worried about other people's perception. Like yep. you, you literally are living your life for the uh, pats on the head and the approval of everybody else. Right. And not well, not if you have a center point of yeah. energy, if you have a center point of origin, then you're like, you know, fuck all you people. Right. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I know what, my, how I'm living my life and I like it. Fuck off. Well, right. Like your personal sense of value should never be rolled up in what a particular girl thinks about you, even if she's or, like a your... group of people. Right. True. I mean, th those are data points. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. if, tw if, if 50 people are telling me I'm an asshole, I might want to evaluate myself and see if I'm an asshole. Um, and it could probably be true. But if my girlfriend tells me I'm an asshole today because she's in a bad mood, I don't fucking care. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's like her her one opinion that is. J, you know, is 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 filtered by a sexual and emotional exchange is not an objective view of my value as a man or even how I'm showing up or my or, or what my perceptions should be. And so many guys, it's like they want mommy, you know what I mean? So they want the pat on the head. They want somebody to tell them that everything's all right. And they look they've never broken free from that need to have some validation from either a caregiver or what then ends up translating to romantic partner, um, which happens because of neurochemicals that are closely related. Like, you know, your the the oxytocin and some of those neurochemicals you have for your, you know, romantic partner is actually very similar to the neurochemical ex you have to, to attach you to your parents. What's missing, hopefully, is the sexual desire. <laughs> you know what I mean? The sexual component, but like that feelings of attachment. Those are just neurochemicals in your brain 
And so when guys have neurochemical attachment to mom and maybe, maybe they have mommy issues, maybe uh, they have absentee parents. A lot of times they get into a relationship with a woman and it's like, well, they want that, that neurochemical attachment fed now, you know, what they were denied when they were younger or whatever. They want to feed that. And you can't feed that neuro, that, that same type of need or whatever that you, you didn't get from your parents. You can't feed that with a girl that you're romantically involved in. It, it's, she's not there to be your mom. It'll totally fall apart. You know what I mean? Mm. But that's I don't a big know, problem. High energy for my other call. You guys are just like, ah, no, I don't have to talk about this. Well, well, that's, a, that's a big problem with uh, a lot of guys though, right? They, they sort of start treating the girl that they're with like their mom. They try to make her happy, you know, cause mom's not happy, that sort of thing. And uh, they end up in that dynamic of trying to get approval from her. Like, like they did from mom and stuff. That's a lot of guys have to unlearn that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there was a time in a place where you had sort of a rite of passage to manhood and like, you know, and that, that rite of passage, you know, was a lot of symbolism involved and a lot of, you know, well, you're going to go through a trial and error, you know, we're going to send you into the woods. Whatever. And, and you have fun. to kill a wolf with a spear. Yeah. Right. Here's a, here's a heart. <laughs> yeah. Here's your one, military one service. <laughs> As there's some Amazon tribe that made you put your hands in a, uh, reed glove full of ants that bit you all right some I mean, wasn't shit, that right? Paul like, Atreides? <laughs> that was like that was the that was how to become a man like, right awful. but like a lot of that stuff i think is particularly for men um was breaking free from the need for approval from parental figures you know at, at some point you know you, you as a as a kid you, you're constantly wanting approval from parental figures yeah. Which makes sense, you know. I mean, down to being a baby, your identity isn't even separated. And, you know, it meant like a baby doesn't know how to separate its own identity from uh, its caregivers. But once, once you, you know, you go through teenage rebellion and all that, that's a process of teenagers trying to break free and find their uh, robot dog, <laughs> find, their, <laughs> but find their inner robot dog. And then, uh, but then, you know, you get into adulthood, you should be being in a place where you're not you know, needing parental figures for approval or needing that is really a sign of emotional maturity. Uh, and I, I think that when guys have, you know, misplaced needs there and attachment issues to work on, you know, they end up transferring that to their romantic partners and they could be the most, va most valuable dude in the world, high SMV, all that stuff, you know, the, the abs, the height, the supercar and, uh, whatever, and and then they're still simping for some fucking bald weird girl that <laughs> nobody should be trying to hook up with anyway. Like what the fuck, <laughs> you know? This is Twenty some years past your fucking prime, <laughs> you know? Was a some a hoe for rappers that ended up in movies and did okay, and then just declined immediately after two thousand. <laughs> like, well, sometimes the ugly ones are the ones that really get it going. Who's that other chick? The one who, did, uh, the Bitcoin one. Remember the Sam Friedman's girl, the ugly little goblin oh, girl? Oh yeah, the one that destroyed that at that Bitcoin exchange. Yeah, now <laughs> so she's also destroying the billionaires' lives because the the Fed's turned her state's evidence, and everybody's joke is like, "This is peak female performance, <laughs> ugliest little troll girl ever." She slept with five billionaires already, at least, that and insane. got away scot free with all these crimes because she turned on them all. Yep, that is so crazy. That yeah. is fucking crazy attainable girls dude not... i still remember this man in my high school some of the worst most evil women were the more attainable ones the hottest girls yeah. didn't have to but the fives oh man they had mental games you wouldn't believe scared the shit well, well they have they have a like much it, larger they have, they have a much much larger pool of men to manipulate and get and over have on, to. you know well yeah it's a necessity right they have to because they're less attractive so they get like a, a hot girl comes in and People just sort of go. It seems, it seems uh, that makes a lot of sense yeah. on a biological scale, right? Because yeah. the least attractive woman has to be the most like bloodthirsty, maniacal person to be able to reproduce, right? Well, in order in order to get the higher level of of good sperm, because she's less desirable. She, she has to be the most. Maybe in some ways, I think, but I think, it, or maybe the the best, like caregiver partner like she's got to increase her value or maybe high sense of humor everyone's met the fat girl is funny you know like it's like high no i'm such a dick <laughs> but the high sense you know they have to work on other traits because their looks are not 
able to compete in the sexual marketplace. I, so I will, things, I, which is totally fine, by the way. We do the same things as guys. I certainly do. I will <laughs> say that that the that the the best chicks to date are the chicks that used to be unattractive and they they were like late bloomers because they had to learn social skills. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so <true. laughs> that's so true. Yeah. You have hobbies? Oh my god. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> Have yeah. a personality, you're funny. Wow. Yeah. You like going to the gym? Holy Jesus. I'll marry you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's one of the weirdest. That's one of the weirdest experiences ever being around a girl who's, you know, categorically nine or ten in, in the circles you're in at least. And then just just nothing. It's just like a wall. You throw anything onto it and nothing sticks. Yeah. They have absolutely nothing to say for anything. Yeah, they've never had to though. You know, yeah. everything's yeah. just been handed to them. Everything's easy. And then they, and then they, you know, get in their forties and they're like, guys don't, guys don't open doors for me anymore. Like what the fuck's going on? <laughs> oh yeah. That's yeah, a big crisis. You know? People aren't just giving me fucking free cars and shit anymore. What's, what's I, mean, I feel, I feel for those chicks. Like picture getting zeroed sure. out as a guy is losing your family and having everybody take her side when she cheats on you for a girl. That's yeah. gotta be the wall hitting 40 and realize everybody was only nice to you. Cause they wanted to sleep with you. Mm -hmm. It's gotta oh. hit the psyche. It is. Well, I've Doesn't watched it. putting up with their tweets. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I've watched it with, uh, you know, with girls I've been, you know, I've been with in the dating market, too, where you're you're like, especially if it's any sort of LTR situation. And, you know, it depends on who you're hooking up with. Right. But I mean, I, you know, I'm hooking up with hot girls with lots. And sometimes there's guys simping for those girls. Like you get, they got a grocery list. And some of these women were, you know, these young girls, especially were painfully unaware or at least, you know, using a lot of cognitive dissonance to, you know, face the fact that these guys just want to bang them, you know, and you'd kind of have to like point that out, you know, in, in a way you're like, you know, these guys are really just after your pussy, right? Like, you understand that? And they're like, no, 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 just, they, no they just want to be friends. They're just, no. good, you know, friends. <laughs> yeah. You're and, then, <clears throat> and then they have that disappointing experience when the, you know, she, she's, let's say dating me or seeing me. And then she decides to make that Facebook public or something, showing a picture with me and her or something like that. And then all of these guy friends drop in their DMs like, oh, what the hell is, oh, who is this? And, you know, actually my all right, little anecdote. <laughs> so my, my, my girl, I've been with her for a little over a year. She, she put post pictures of us when we were dating and stuff. And she, she had guys sending her like video clips of them crying on the floor singing songs to her like all this shit because she's she was a model you know one time so she had collected quite a following of people and it was like you have a boyfriend what uh, what about me you know and dudes like threatening to off themselves like all kinds of crazy shit and we're just like what the fuck <laughs> you know like and i'm just sitting there i kind of like nodding my head i'm like well that's because that's what these dudes are like right this is what Wait, 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 allowed to be a part of your following. So Women you don't want sensitive men that are crying. I, yeah. That's weird. That's weird. I thought that's right. what that's well, what, they, that's what they like. Yeah. Well, they were in a fantasy because she was, you know, kind on her social media. They were in a fantasy, you know, say, situation thinking that that their likes and hearts and simping for her photos. And she was not like an Instagram over like her contracts. Yeah. But yeah, oh right. You I know, liked all your photos. What do you mean you have a boyfriend? Yeah. Right. Or when she was <laughs> single and she would reply to a DMs and stuff, but not like in sexual sense and then you know, whatever, but just sort of reply. And then like dudes would think like they're you know, they they're in this relationship, they're in the fantasy relationship with this girl. And it's crazy the amount of dudes. I mean, I know it's not a majority in terms of the population, but it's sure from that there's girl's perspective. There's a lot of guys like that. There's dude, a lot. It's from that girl's perspective. Yeah, it feels like the majority. I've, I've seen it because I've I've had friends and stuff. I'm like, oh, what are you doing? They're like, oh, I'm just messaging so and so. I'm just like, uh, <laughs> why? You really? <laughs> yeah, and it's not even like normal calculated convert, like normal conversations mm. that they're having. It's like this weird simping shit. It's so like guys who have no sexual access in the things they do, right? Like it's just fucking insane that the how socially bad they become. And it's, it's really sad, you know what I mean? And, and it just it really, it really hammers the idea that guys need to get out in the real world, talk to real women, have real relationships, get off the fucking internet. You know what I mean? Because this shit is so not helping.
anybody, you know. And we need we need men's spaces too. Oh my god! Like yeah. we need spaces where men can actually speak and not have to, you know, police ourselves because we might say something mean or yeah. rude. That's why I have a. That's why I have my beer club, guys. Beer club. I just read Ryan. I just read your <laughs> tactical paragliding expert. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to use euphemisms. I don't want anybody's channels nuked, so oh, try to be God. as subtle as possible. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Some of the memes, though, I got to admit, I'm not big on the conflict one way or the other, but the memes are great. Who would win? The most uh, expensive intelligent agency in the world or Jihad Mario Kart? I was, I've been chuckling at that like an <laughs> hour. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. The billion dollar like intelligence and, and defense system yeah. 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 against a few hundred dollar paraglider. And, and the thing on the men's spaces, I, I, I'm i trying not to distract because I'm my mind's wandering. But yeah, no, with yeah. the men's spaces, the funny part is not even the girls that ruin them. It's the guys that simp for those girls. It's like yeah. this weird uh, Ian Ironwood talked about it. The praxeology of the dominant male where you put a girl in this place and then a certain percentage, the thirsty guys will stop making their mission, whatever the club's about. Like if it's a beer club, beer instead of that is trying to be the girl. The girl at the beer club is their mission. And then if you put a second girl in the competition now becomes which one of those guys can win over more of the guys mm-hmm. and they'll fight each other viciously until some guys like, Hey, can we stop fighting over the chicks and join the beer club? And then those two chicks will get that guy kicked out. And that's where the policing comes from. It's simps that want to keep up this uh, covert contract, this fantasy, and they kick out the useful members. And that's how a space completely dies. Yeah. That's why no girls are allowed in beer club. Yeah. It's the, it's the he-man woman haters club guys. Exactly. It's, and girls, it's not you. It's us. <laughs> That's what I want to. I want to. I need to start a, a San Jose no ma'am, no ma'am no, no, chapter. No, 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 ma'am. <laughs> that would be funny. From <laughs> and if anybody gets Nerdy mad, program. you can just talk about like it's ironic, whatever. It's just a funny shirt. It's just yeah. a funny show. Chill out. Yeah, yeah. We're not real misogynists. We're just doing it like because we want to be edgy. Oh, okay, mm. fine, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> We're just married with children, cosplaying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, DC, see you get it. That's why I, I like the the state let me say Troon. I think it gets the point across. But why? Like why? Why do we need to to cross boundaries with uh getting against terms of service and getting a ban? You guys know what we're talking about. We know what we're talking. We're communicating effectively. It's another right. thing too. We're talking about all this sexual dynamic stuff and a lot of it is subtext. So if you guys yeah. start understanding us using euphemisms, like if you can understand what tactical paragliding expert means and you can get a <laughs> chuckle out of that, then you can handle when a girl says, I like, I love you, but I'm not in love with you. Or yeah. uh, what was the other line we had for that one? Will Smith's wife saying whatever the hell bullshit she did to convince him to do whatever God awful. <laughs> I don't know what she did, but that, yeah. that's, the I had, I yeah. had an entanglement, an entanglement, an entanglement, yeah. <laughs> entanglement, right. Now go entangle your fist on Chris Rock's face. <laughs> Jesus. Well, yeah. And that's the, the cognitive dissonance, a word salad. You know what I mean? The, the 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 manipulative um <laughs> way of using information you know through omission through you know redirecting you know you're talking about one thing next thing you know you find yourself talking about the thing you said four months ago that made her mad and then you end up you know average guy ends up finding himself apologizing to her when the initial conversation was something that she did that was fucked up like things like that i mean it's just you know guys can't they need to really build their communication skills yeah. and understanding that subtext and everything because that's how they communicate. And women are running circles around you guys because you do, you're not good at it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> one of them evil BPD women, they'll teach you more about how to communicate than anybody. Yeah. Oh my you God. have to put up with some bullshit, but you learn. <laughs> right. You still get too emotionally attached. That's all. Yeah. <laughs> it's like playing with a, dangerous animal at the zoo <laughs> well, that's what i think everybody thinks burden of performance just means you better go work out at the gym harder like no burden of performance is kind of this too yeah. understanding what do they call speak in manglish but understand womanese catchy phrase i love that one i gotta bring that back <laughs> manglish i've heard womanese that's the first time i've ever heard manglish <laughs> yeah well it's, that's why it was the guy just said that essentially as a way like yeah just because you understand womanese don't talk like your gay bestie and he couldn't think of a word so he just used manglish <laughs> i like it it's yeah. pretty good <laughs> yeah, not bad. Will Smith did the old Hollywood power couple. I mean, he presented as it in the same way he presented himself as Muhammad Ali. Sure. <laughs> he was an authentic Muhammad Ali. He was an authentic power couple. 
Tom Cruise is an authentic super spy. Yeah. This is this is what it irks me too, though. It's like Will Smith is a hundred times the talent and star that Jada is. There's no right. power couple there. He mm-hmm. dragged her along. Her career was over in the 90s. She's yeah. not important. Like he, he he kept her afloat. But this idea that oh, she's strong. Brave woman. Oh, look at all the stuff she's doing. Nah, she's been writing coattails. She's a coattail writer. Actually, yeah. yeah, she had the one movie with with uh, Tupac, and then she had two Matrix things as a minor character, and that's pretty much it, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. She had some movies back, like I said, back in the nineties. That she, she like, was in the Gotham purple? show, but she was terrible. She was the worst character in the whole show. Yeah, I can't even remember half of her videography because it's not that. And important, now she does but... the table talk, red table thingy. Oh God. Man, she looks like a Bene Gesserit right now. Jesus. <laughs> I'm yeah. looking it up. I'm trying to see. What is... Oh. Yeah, what's her uh, videography? I, I actually looked at it the other day. Um, Yeah, she was in stuff like... I mean, but a lot of these things... I, I mean, I remember A Different World. I remember that show, like, 91. <laughs> these are... Yeah. Oh, I used to watch Jesus. Different World. Oh, Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, there's I a mean, lot of nothing here, man. Dwayne Wayne was that the guy? Yeah, the Karate Kid with uh, Jackie Chan. Ugh. Terrible version <laughs> of it. <laughs> Ride or Isn't... Die. What a movie yeah. to be in, Jada. <laughs> oh yeah, Ride or Die. <clears throat> oh, fuck off. Yeah, yeah. She was in some hood ass movies. Menace to Society in '93. <laughs> Remember Ride that or one? Die. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. What do you guys yeah. think of this? Says that uh, Jada hates Will because she knows she needed him to be who she is. He reminds her of her lack of own ability. Do you think she has that penis envy? I, I very well could be. She's been gassed up her whole life. Think she's women. Women need a lot of lots of women need guys to be who they are. You know, I think that's just being a woman for the most yeah. part, right? But I don't know if girls have that like guys do with that. Like maybe that whole mm-hmm. resentful. Like you see, like if like a lot of people from my high school saw me, the girls, and kind of got resentful that they could have been better and they didn't. And I'm not that great. And I can see a lot of girls doing that. Like moms get jealous of their daughters for being more successful than they were. I I be. see it as like, man, they. I think there is definite resent that builds up some because of the messaging, where you as a woman aren't good unless you have a job and you're a boss girl and you're doing these whatever feminist things. So if you're the man you're providing, you know, I was in this situation, you're the man you're providing, you're taking care of all that stuff, but she's not doing the boss girl stuff. Like she feels inferior and she starts trying to compete with you. Yeah. God, that's you know, horrible. well, it's and all about, all polarity. Polarity. And, then, and then your achievements become downgraded or resented because they, they think that they have to be doing this boss girl thing rather than kicking the shit out of, being a wife or girlfriend yeah but it's yeah it goes down to like you know women rely more so on the opinions of the outside world not that guys never do worry about this but women's rely more more so about the opinions of the outside world um to you know gauge whether they're doing the right things or not and whether they're valuable or not i mean there's there's social proof and that what girlfriend's family their circles dad you know says about them thinks about them that that steers and dictates their behavior um and so without being in frame of a guy that they trust and admire and that's the guy that they want to be with that guy ends up not having that leadership role in her life as the person to validate her decisions so then she looks to the outside world for that validation well, the outside world with a feminist narrative is going to say that she needs to be, you know, as strong and as successful and as good as her husband, if not more so, and also do everything at home in the house. Like she's got to do all this stuff and it, but it downgrades the role of a woman in a relationship that is very valuable being a feminine supportive partner, you know, is a valuable role and that gets downgraded and replaced by you know, you have to have all of the success that your husband's having. You have to have a, you know, you have to, you have to do these accomplishments in order to be valuable as a woman. And in the sexual marketplace, at least, there's really not much value there. I don't know anybody who's ever wanted to fuck a girl because of her accomplishments. 
You know what I mean? And so it's just, it's just not, it, but, but there's, there's a tremendous amount of value outside of the sex part. Right. Um, in terms of being a supportive partner to a guy who's doing accomplishments, tremendous value there. Actually, I do yeah. have one example of it, yeah. Paul. It's actually crazy. Yeah. Chrissy, Chrissy Mayer went on her show the once we were talking off cam. Oh yeah. This is the only example I've ever heard. So hmm. she was talking about guys that used to date her, not hmm. because they liked her, but because they wanted to get in on the comedy scene without having to tell jokes. So they would date her so they could sit oh. down and talk with like Louis CK or whoever the hell she was hanging with. But that's oh, today. Yeah. That's, that's such a niche example. I think it kind of the ex <laughs> exception that proves the point. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel oh, bad. Yeah. She was talking about it. You could see like PTSD going over her face. I'm like, I changed the subject. Let's talk about her dicks. That's hilarious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah. And I mean, guys can be opportunist in that sense too, but I think those guys are being particularly opportunist. You know what I mean? Oh, um, yeah. What, you know, it's like, you know, it's like Jada would be happier with a guy being in a female role with the, with the dominant guy, but it's, she's not right. I mean, you could tell because a, a happy person does not communicate about her relationship the way that she does. Yeah. You know what I mean? And communicate about like, that's, that's mm -hmm. how, like, how do I, how do you tell happy? Well, that's like not what happens. Their kids don't like seem all that um, <laughs> good either. <laughs> the kids don't just seem like they're doing that well. They seem a little damaged. Yeah. Th those kids are pretty messed up for sure. That's the worst part though. The dad, that's the thing. Will's like, I refuse to be like my dad. I remember his little speech on that. Raise happy kids, do what he couldn't do. Ended up making his kids even worse. Like Will may not have liked his childhood, but it did encourage him to at least be a good rapper, a good actor. Yeah, to be an achiever and go do? after and good stuff. What has kids done other than dad gave him a job? It's like, you know how your dad hooks you up yeah. with his friend's job at Dairy Queen? Except for, for Will Smith. Yeah. That's like dad, dad got him an acting job and then he was trying to do some box water. Have, have you no have you Seems noticed that his one. kids uh have dropped the Smith from their their names now? From really? the brand? Yeah. Oh, dude, that's gotta hurt. Yeah, like I think Willow was the first one to do it. And then uh and I think uh his uh So it's just so, so are they using Pinkett or are they trying to do the one word? No, name? they're just doing the, the one the single name thing. Mm. Oh. Paul and I keep trying to do that, but it doesn't work out. We get, it confuses everybody. <laughs> I don't know, man. A lot of people holding their hats on him being the great role model for like black families and that. And it's kind of, it sucks right. to watch your heroes die is all I'm saying. It's like when I saw Peterson after he got back after the diazepams and his yeah, daughter started he, taking over. He went downhill. I don't want to say it's like I lost a father, but it's in that ballpark, you know? <laughs> Now what's he doing? What is he doing now? Like so, unrealized and... thoughts to super chat here. He says credit where credit's due. Women are more motivated than men now do to pass narratives. Some already disproved and have tons of spaces for them. Uh, oh, I see what he's saying. Yeah. Well, it's learned helplessness for guys. You get well, it, and you learned helplessness. That... And it's also like, why are you doing it? Why are you working hard? So your government can steal money from you tell you you're a bad person and then you can get divorce raped and have your kids taken from you. Like what's yeah. the point for a lot but of I mean, guys? there's choices you can make around that, but that's my point is that, uh, learned helplessness. Like they'll shock dogs at the experiment. The original one, BF Skinner put dogs in cages. They shocked the cage. Dogs ran out of the cage. They'd lock the cage. The dogs tried to escape. And when they couldn't, they would just sit there and get shocked. And then the crazy part of it is they opened the door, shocked the dogs again. And the dog still sat there and whimpered. And that's kind of where guys are. Like, why even try to get out of this cage? It's not, it's locked. And even Rolo's like, the cage has never been locked. You've just been gaslit for a lifetime to think it was. And you're right. You don't want to give the government money. There's black markets starting up in countries all over the place where people are making money under the table or expatriate to a country that treats you better with tax wise. Or in my case, just write off a shit ton of my revenue. So I have to pay a way smaller tax rate than I did a salary. Yep. But that's the thing. You have to want to. You have to want to solve the problem and not just give up. Yeah. Because what else are you going to do? You can't jerk off on your sofa watching Netflix all day, every day for the rest of your life. You got to eventually do something. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Apparently. There's, there's some guys out there that might take you up on that. Yeah. <clears throat> some giant forearmed man. It's like, what do you got? <laughs> one like this and the other one like this. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. <laughs> yeah. How did Blackmore Rolls go from MLK to George Floyd and Jada? Gullibility of media, man. Go, go, uh, of course, you only ever see the powerful. bad examples. Either, and and right? isn't even, is it even really 
that uh, they are role models. Who said they're actually role models? It's just what the media is spitting out there. Who, who's actually absorbing it and being like, yeah, I totally, I don't, I've never seen a George Floyd t-shirt out anywhere. I'm in well, California so too. Yeah, actually that's fair. You know, just because you're seeing it on your timeline doesn't mean it's even real. <laughs> you know? I won't go there. I won't go there. <laughs> just saying, just saying, you have no idea. Like what fake nonsense they're putting in front of your face to make you believe something. They're trying to normalize certain things to get a, a feeling or a rise out of you. Mm -hmm. Even my, even our timeline, like, dude, you know that one I have on my pin comment right now of the chick who like puts her husband on blast for loading the dishwasher wrong. And everybody has that moment in their life. I've had this conversation and I've handled it well, and, but you look at him and it's made to make you feel mad about it. But at one point he stops and looks at the camera and you're like, Oh, it's a skit. He's in on it. <laughs> So much of this stuff is fake and they just bait you on it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, we're at the, I got to get going to my class or at the. Yeah. I gotta get going to so let's uh, run through everybody. Let's tell what you're doing. Let's go with Paul. Um, Right after this at 2 p.m. Eastern time, I'm hosting the dragon ship for Thor. Thor couldn't oh. make it this week. He, he pawned it off on me. So I'm doing that. Uh, Check out my podcast on Monday. It also features Thor. We're talking about his book, A Dominant Masculine Presence. So um, check that out. Awesome. Uh, Rhyme. Book three, third draft is finished. It's in the editor's hands. I'm tired of looking at that piece of shit. Done. So I'm going to work on the cover now. He's going to get it back. We're going to do the last things. We should have it out November. We, I should have it out in November. So if you guys have ever wondered about what the hell they're talking about in the red pill with dread and how to survive and thrive in a struggling or dead bedroom. This is everything the guys have had for the last 10 years. And I mean, everything from divorce to mistresses, to plating the ex-wife to how to separate properly, gain control of the treasury. There's probably like a hundred different mental models, strategies, and topics in there. It's a slog of a book, but I guarantee you'll like it. Just follow the sub stack, the rhinestone sub stack, and then you'll be able to get caught up as well as look through the back catalog. I've released a lot of, the material that's in there, so there's no surprises when the book finally comes out to print. And that's it for me. Nice. Paul. All right. Well, uh, it was fun hanging out for a little bit. Uh, you know, I had a, another call before this. I couldn't get out of a uh, big, uh, it was a huge, actually a pretty big coaching call with a business group. So it was kind of a nice call, and for, but unfortunately cut into our time here. Um yeah, the only thing I could say really is to go. I put a link in the chat, but to go um, to my new channel, uh, support it if you could with a subscribe. And I just put up another video on Dread. It's a series that's on there. It's these action packed, like seven to 10 minute videos uh, with a lot of information. Uh, it's a series on frame. Uh, what got put up was not, I'm sorry, not so much Dread, but like kind of what happens when, why, why the relationship starts to, go south and she starts to come out of frame and like what that means so a little 10 minute video on that for you guys to enjoy if you guys can go over there and pete take a peek and throw a like on there something like that help me out that would be good it'll and you'll like the video too and that's really it that's all i got thanks for having me on uh, of course awesome. as usual <laughs> all right guys uh thanks for coming in and watching the show uh you can go to jumpers.net it's time for the newsletter um, I have, uh, programs on gum road, check out the description below. I got links there and then, uh, hit me up, email DM. I've got, um, offering online coaching, right? So I've got a guy I'm teaching my fish smash program to, uh, help him out with some of his fights. Um, I'm in a little bit of a, uh, beginning stage with it. So I'm only doing like 50 bucks a month. It's cheap. So we'll get on a private Telegram chat, and then I'll send you my Fit Smash program stuff to start training. And uh, you can video yourself doing the stuff. I can check it and make sure you're doing it right, and then move on to the next things. So I'm getting that started. I'm in the beta version because a lot of the videos and stuff aren't great. They're not pristine uh, condition, but I'm going to build up to that. So that's why I'm offering a little bit cheaper price for uh, getting guys started. But that's all I got. Um, again, thanks for coming in, and we'll check you guys.